go forward. Now, there was overvoting in 807 polling units. In 875 polling units. Which makes 18.3%. Yeah. And it accounted for 345,000 votes. 47,560 votes. So these votes substantially impacted the final results. Now, again, where did these votes come from? It came from Oru, Oz, Oguta, Okigwe, Oso, and all the Wangele. So this is where these votes came from, where 54% of, um, of these polling units with overvoting are in five local government areas. Four of those are in the senatorial district of Olu. So after the 2023 general election, there has been a lot of crisis in Labour Party. And for these reasons, many believe that Labour Party have no chance of winning any election in 2027. Something happened this weekend where the local government election conducted in Bauchi State. Labour Party never filled any candidate for some certain position. But eventually, they turned out to be the winner, which sent a very big, significant you know, sign to the obedient movement or the Labour Party faithful. So now let's look at the result that is coming out from Bauchi State local government uh, election. This is what. But before then, remember that the federal government has granted the Labour Party the, the local government autonomy. Remember the case was in court of which they have granted them this full autonomy financially. And before then, the federal government had an agreement with the governors to conduct the election within three months, of which that is the reason why you are seeing some elections springing out from all over the country as of today. And now it happens that in Bogora local government in Bauchi state, the Labour Party did not field any candidate for a council ward in that particular local government. And it happens that Labour Party won that particular council ward with over 2,000 votes, specifically 2,200 votes, closing with uh, PDP with uh, 2,168 votes, as well as APC with uh, 200 and something votes. Now, the, 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 this, this will now show you that in 2023 general election, that unlike the popular opinion and the declaration by the Independent National Ele Electoral Commission and the uh, uh, decision of the Supreme Court and the Appeal Court, which mandates or declared Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the president of Nigeria, it is now becoming obvious to Nigerians and to those who believe in the obedient movement as well as the Labour Party faithful that Peter Obi actually won that election in 2023. And this will now show that the crisis going on in Labour Party is as a result of the threats that they perceive that will be coming in 2027. So what next for Labour Party comes 2027? Many will believe that they have not actually prepared themselves or they never see this coming and it happened so and for the fact that julius abore has been hit so well during uh, this period it will be worthy of note that the high time for julius abore to step aside just as many labor party believers and uh, obedient uh, faithful hold that it is high time for him to step aside so that the Labour Party can now take the mandate fully in 2027 by building the party with people who have the vision of a new Nigeria. I don't know if you have the same sentiment with those that have that are, are, are taught, but however, there is something that happened in the Imo election, the 2024 Imo election, 2023 Imo election, that was November election last year, of which Pupos of Dima became the governor for the second time in the state. And a lot of higi haga happened. The same thing that happened during the presidential election was the same thing that was repeated during the gubernatorial election in Imo state. So now I have this video from Channels Television for you to watch and have a vivid understanding of how the regain was done in Imo state. But before then, have this in mind that before anybody can actually win the incumbent in power they have a lot to do so let's watch this and understand that our institution has been totally destroyed but there is hope this is what we know 
The man that was declared winner is the APC candidate and the governor of Imo said he got a re-election and he won that election as declared by INEC. But this is what we do now. 29.4% was a voter turnout. But what did you find out at the Athena Center when you dug into the resort and you found out what exactly really happened in that election? So go to the next slide. So these are the key data from um, INEC and also from the Freedom of Information request. Mm. So against the 771,000 voters that was made to call the result, the Beavers only accredited 541,000 voters. Officially, officially. On the day of election. On the day of election. 541,000. That was accredited, accredited yes. by the Beavers. And on the EC8A, the electoral officers recorded a total of 728,887 votes. On the EC8B, somewhere um, there was vote inflation. We went to 729,000. But along the line, certain cancellations, we come to 771,017 at the EC8D, the final votes that was used in calling the result. So this is 541, hold that number, and this is 717,000. So you can see the Fantastic. massive difference. So a lot of Almost 200,000. Yeah, let's difference. break it down. This is on the election day. Yes. What the Beavers officially, the instrument What's for accreditation. Accreditation. Fantastic. Yes. And the Beavers emerge from INEC wanting to say accreditation and voting is going to commence almost at the same Simultaneous. time. Simultaneously. So you accredit, you yeah. vote. So um, there was no way you could have accredited 541 and 717 will vote. And because usually, no accreditation, no voting. That's usually, I, uh, the Beavers has a memory. Yes. It captures in its memory yes, it's stored it. what is being uh, accredited on the day of election. election. 541,000. But now there are discrepancies There's in discrepancy. these figures. Now, Correct. downloaded from INEC viewing portal, INEC which viewing are portal. the result has been uh, scanned, scanned yes. by the officials of INEC Correct. onto the INEC, uh, onto the IREF. So if you go to the next slide, you will see what we saw on the IREF. Um, if we see um, what we saw on the IREF, um, sorry, okay. So here we are. No, go back, then go back. So let's continue from there. So... There was significant non-compliance with INEC electoral guidelines in 1,101 polling units, where the results, the total votes cast, did not match with the Beavers accreditation. So that is to say, Beavers accredits A number and they, they recorded B numbers. So the number of voters were more than what the Beavers accredited. This only happened in 23% of the polling units. Now, hold that. In 77% of the polling units, the results were consistent. Mm -hmm. The total votes and the beavers yeah. matched. Mm -hmm. So there was very high compliance. Technology has helped us in Nigeria to say that our votes do really count. Mm -hmm. the, our 73% was compliant. 23.1% now this yeah. is the problem. They altered the election results. If you look at this, these are the local governments and these are the non-compliance issues. The highest non-compliance happened in about 10 polling units, yeah. in about 10 local governments. So you see Oru East, Uguta, Okigwe, Olo, Oru West, Ikeduru, um, Wangele. Wangele, Oso, and Donkwere. Interestingly, all these local governments are in the senatorial zone of the governor. Yeah. This of the winner of the election, of the, winner of the, the election, APC candidates. The APC candidates, interestingly. But the highest was in Oru East, the local government of the governor. That's where we saw the highest non-compliance. So what happened was that whatever we saw as the official result, yes, either the one uploaded on the Beavers, the mm -hmm. one uploaded on the IREF, and the one INEC had yes. eventually as uh, given to you by INEC, yes. there were discrepancies, discrepancies to the original result has been announced. So now that you can see that it is obvious that they had 500,000 people that came out accredited and voted, right? And it happened that what was submitted at from ECHA was over 700,000 people that were accredited and vote. Now, it also happened that the number of uh, uh, votes that came out from some of those local governments and the particular local government that have this highest number of uh, 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 disputed votes is the, the, the local government that the Imo state governor is coming from. 
and the senatorial zone that he is coming from has one of the disputed number of voters you know the disputed number of voters that is where the number is coming from so that will now tell you how he was able to mastermind the rigging in that particular election so what do you think going for 2027 election what do you think nigerians opposition leaders should be doing in order to win their election comes 2027 and what nigerians as citizens should be doing in order to protect their own uh, uh ballot uh, uh paper after casting their vote in 2027 let's have this conversation at the comment section thank you for watching